Picasso and the Girl with a Ponytail. It was the first day of summer. Sylvette and her friends were sitting on the terrace in the sun. Sylvette was so shy that she always sat a little apart, but she listened to every word. Have you heard? Picasso is staying right here in Belarus. It's incredible. The most famous artist in the world. Every picture he paints is worth a fortune. I heard he had a huge white car sent from America in exchange for just one painting. So that was very interested. Secretly, she dreamed of becoming an artist. In a suitcase under her bed was a sketchbook full of her drawings, all she had ever seen. Suddenly, Savette noticed something absolutely amazing. Right in front of her eyes, a beautiful picture had appeared above the terrace wall. Look, shouted her friends, it's Savette. Oh, Savette has a ponytail like that. Sylvette hid her face in her hands. She heard a roar of laughter from behind the wall. They all ran to look. They saw a man holding a picture above his head. He was short, but very muscular. He wore a striped shirt, shorts, and bedroom slippers. It was Picasso. I saw you from my studio, he laughed, and I made a sketch. Come on, why don't you visit me? So that was last inside the door. Her heart was beating like a drum. The studio was a treasure house, as if the artist had never thrown away a single thing. Every surface was piled with bits and pieces, tins of paint, scraps of wood, strange sculptures, children's toys, broken pots, a cowboy hat, flowers, a painted plate, a boomerang, fish bones, a clown's mask, a birdcage, guitars, a bullfighter's sword, and more than anything else, Sylvette saw paintings. Hundreds of hundreds of them, each one signed with a single word, Picasso. Picasso was still laughing. He was 73 years old, but he acted like a young boy. Now then, he shouted, I will draw one person. Who will that be? One of Sylvette's friends stepped forward very quickly. She was very beautiful. You can draw me, Mr. Picasso, she said. I will sit for you. Picasso looked at her quite fiercely. No, he said. You saw my picture outside. I have chosen the girl with the ponytail. Sylvette felt a bit sick. She wanted to run straight out the door, but Picasso was very kind. It's all right, he said gently. You can trust me. Come, sit down. So that's too shy, teased her friends, and dreamy too as well. That's good, laughed the artist. Then we will get along, because Picasso is a dreamer too. Come back another time, he called to Sylvette's friends. Sylvette and I have work to do. Picasso looked carefully at Sylvette. She was shivering. Here, borrow this coat, he said. Then he began to draw. The first picture was slow and careful, a delicate pencil study. The second was larger, Sylvette as still and nervous as a wild deer. Then Picasso began to work faster and faster. The pictures grew larger and more strange. Picasso was enjoying himself. At the end of the day, Sylvette ran home. She took out her sketchbook, but her head was spinning and none of her drawings came out right. The next morning, Sylvette returned nervously to the studio. Perhaps Picasso had forgotten her, but he opened the door and grinned at her like a schoolboy. Little by little, the paintings became more daring and more extraordinary. Little by little, Sylvette became less shy. Picasso seemed to change every moment. Just like his pictures, he was proud like a king. He painted like a magician, and yet he liked to dress up and play games. Sometimes he put on a funny hat or mask to make Sylvette laugh. He told her about the animals he had owned. A dog, a goat who he allowed to sleep indoors, a bad-tempered monkey. Once he even kept an owl. And of course, Picasso had painted them all. All through the summer, Picasso created pictures of Sylvette and sculptures in cardboard and metal. As the work became bigger and bolder, she became braver too. Sylvette's father had left home when she was small, but for that summer, Picasso was like a father to her. 
Shai Savet with the most famous painter in the world. It was a real fairy tale. One day, Savet plucked up her courage and showed Picasso her secret sketchbook. Picasso, she told him about her dream of becoming an artist. Picasso didn't laugh or tease her. That's good, he said loudly, but you have to be brave. You have to learn to let go. Look at me. When I'm angry, I make angry pictures. When I'm sad, my pictures are sad too. And when I'm happy, my paintings are full of joy. Even my dreams are in my work. There can be no secrets in painting. That afternoon, a photographer came to the studio. Savette hated having her photo taken. She wanted to hide away. But then she saw Picasso making funny faces at the camera, and suddenly it didn't seem so bad. The man took dozens of pictures of Picasso and Savette beside the paintings. On the cover of a famous magazine. Before long, every magazine wanted a picture of Picasso's new model. Girls in Paris and London were all copying her hair hairstyle. They wanted a Sylvette ponytail. Sylvette cut out all the photographs and locked them carefully in her suitcase. Sometimes Picasso worked late into the night. Once Sylvette saw him behind the studio in the middle of a pile of garbage, hunting for interesting objects. The richest artist who ever lived made sculptures from old junk. Sylvette had seen some of them in magazines. A baboon with two toy cars for a face. A bull's head made from a bicycle seat and handlebars. Sylvette loved watching Picasso work. Painting sculptures and painted pots poured from him like a volcano. At last, Picasso started a huge sculpture of Sylvette with old pieces of pottery for arms and legs. It had a long neck and a round bag just like hers, but the head was so strange. Sylvette didn't think it looked like her at all. As she watched, Sylvette had a sad feeling that this would be the last time Picasso would use her as his model. Since the day on the terrace, she had been in his work. Soon it would all fade like the summer. While Picasso worked, Sylvette began telling him her secrets. She talked about the time her father had gone away. Sylvette had kept a special picture of him in her suitcase, but she had never told anyone how hurt and lonely she had been. Picasso looked at her with burning black eyes. It's very hard when people move apart, he said, but try to remember, with every door that closes, a new door opens. It began to grow dark. And as they looked at the sculpture, Sylvette told Picasso a secret she had locked away and tried to forget. She talked about the man who had come to live with her mother, a loud, unpleasant bully. Sylvette was sometimes so unhappy that she wanted to run away. Picasso looked at her kind of, then he jumped up. You have given me an idea, he said. I knew something was missing from the sculpture. Sylvette must hold something in her hand. Picasso began to search through bits and pieces on the table. He tipped out a drawer on the floor. At last he found what he wanted. In her hand, Picasso announced, Sylvette holds a key. He pushed the big iron key into the hand of the sculpture. Sylvette looked puzzled. She has a key because she has so many secrets locked away. Picasso fixed the key in place with some plaster. But she also has a key, listen Sylvette, to open new doors. Then Picasso reached out his hand, white with plaster, and gently touched Sylvette's face. Look, it is finished, the girl with the key. Now Sylvette, I would like to give you a present. You may choose any picture you like. Perhaps it will help open some doors for you. When Sylvette stepped out of the studio for the last time, she was carrying the very first picture. She held it carefully because the paint on the signature was not quite dry. For Sylvette from Picasso, a beautiful picture of the girl with a ponytail. After that summer, Sylvette began to paint as bravely as Picasso had taught her. Gradually, she became a well-known artist herself. 
When the picture Picasso gave her was sold, Sylvette had enough money to pay for a beautiful apartment of her very own with space for a real studio high on the top floor with a view across all of Paris. Sylvette ran upstairs, turned the key, and opened the door. And here is a picture of Sylvette and Picasso. This is one of the pictures that the photographer that came to their studio took. Uh, at this time, Picasso is 73 years old. This was taken in 1954. Sylvette is about 20. During the time that they worked together that summer, Picasso produced over 30 works of art. During his lifetime, he produced over 30,000 works of art. Picasso lived for about another 20 years after this picture was taken. He passed away in 1973 at the age of 92. Sylvette David, or as she is known by now, Lydia Corbett, lives in England. After she and Picasso parted ways, she was married, had several children, and moved to England. She now produces art under the name of Lydia Corbett in England.